Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Dr. Bruce Borosian, who is president of the American University of Armenia, which has just lived through a historic week. Uh, Bruce, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Sophie. Um, tell us about this historic week. What has AUA done? Well, we've been up until now uh, a university that offers two-year master's programs. And this year, we opened a four-year bachelor's program, so we admitted our first undergraduate students this week. Which would be historic for any institution, but in your case, the institution itself is unique, and uh, uh, I don't know if it's a trendsetter, maybe we hope it will be, um, but tell us about the University of California affiliation and why this is so important for Armenia and for the region, not just for the institution. Uh, the University of California was one of the founding organizations of the American University of Armenia. The uh, Armenian General Benevolent Union was another, and the Armenian government was the third. Uh, together, in the late 1980s, representatives from all three of these groups came together and recognized that it would be uh, uh, beneficial to the region to start an American university here. Uh, at that time, they imagined that it would be the first American university in the Soviet Union. First of several, perhaps. Uh, the first of several, yeah, uh, and, and uh, by the time AUA was founded in 1991, Armenia was independent. It was actually founded on the same day that Armenia became independent. All three of those organizations remain active in AUA on our board uh, of trustees. There are representatives from throughout the University of California system, from the Ar Armenian General Benevolent Union, and from the government. This is an American institution. Yes. Which means that, that the degree is the degree of an American institution. There's no uh, equivalency required at the end of the process or anything. Well, uh, in addition to being an affiliate of the University of California, we are also accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, which is one of the accrediting agencies uh, for higher education recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. So yes, you can transfer credits from AUA to other accredited universities in the I'm US. asking these technical questions because I think at the end of the day, understanding that uh, uh, systemically, organically, this is an American institution brings us to all of the other obvious theoretical questions. What does an American institution bring that an equivalent Armenian institution perhaps doesn't? Why is this institution necessary? Uh, there's, there's several answers to that, actually. Uh, the first answer I would give is that it offers English language higher education. That's the first and most obvious distinction. Uh, a second distinction is that it offers uh, an American liberal arts education. And what that means is that there is uh, uh, general education requirements in addition to your major distribution requirements, breadth requirements. We want to graduate educated people, people who appreciate all of the academic endeavor from the humanities to the social sciences, natural sciences, mathematics, uh, broadly educated people in addition to their major. So that would be a, a, a second distinguishing feature. Um, uh, we also think that the majors that we introduced are reasonably unique in the country as well. Uh, there are other distinguishing features like that. You know, our staff has been there. We covered yesterday's matriculation exercises live. I think the distinction that hits most people most is the environment, the, uh, the concept, the liberalness of the environment, not just that it's a liberal arts curriculum, but it's a liberal, inclusive sort of environment. It's the American psyche. Yeah, things like a faculty senate, broad faculty governance over academic matters, uh, a student council, student governance as well. The concept of academic freedom as it's enshrined in the 1940 Statement on Academic Freedom in the United States, all of these things uh, are other distinguishing Student people. services. Student services for our students, which we've had to uh, introduce and reshape. We now have a Center for Student Success at AUA for specifically for our undergraduate students. Um, for years, 
the American university, at least at the beginning, uh, made a point of saying that you know, we will do the things that other Armenian institutions of higher education do not, that we will try not to duplicate. 22 years later, the direction has changed. I'm not sure you're duplicating, but you, know, you have entered the, the undergraduate sphere, which is what so many Armenian institutions do. Uh, was that a problem? Did you have to overcome hurdles to get there? Um, not really. Uh, it's, we have always tried, as you say, to be complementary, uh, not competitive, but, but more complementary than competitive. Uh, I think we're still doing that. The three majors that we've chosen for the undergraduate program are uh, English and communication, and communication includes things like journalism, public relations, etc. cetera. Uh, and combining that with an English language message delivery, I think is a fairly unique bachelor's degree in Armenia now. Um, uh, the BA in business, the, the way that business is taught at AUA is similar to the way that it's taught at a US business school. The third one is a, a Bachelor of Science in, in Computational Sciences. This again, I would argue, is a fairly unique mixture of half applied mathematics, half computer science, sewn together with uh, 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 the kinds of courses that will enable people to write scientific software, engineering software that is again carving out a unique space in software engineering. I'm going to ask you a question about questions. Where is the, the development phase of this? In other words, what questions are there still in your minds for which you don't yet have answers? Perhaps things like how to help students get to the next stage, that is turn education into real, paying, satisfying, country-changing jobs. Um, I suspect that's a question that's on your agenda that perhaps does or doesn't have an answer. What are these questions that you still are going to have to face, you think, as this process develops? Well, jobs in the general economy in the country is, is something that we think about hard, and in fact, we did think about it when we chose those particular majors. We spoke with people in the government, we spoke with people in industry, we spoke with people at other universities and other academics and tried to identify what the needs are of the country. Now, just because the country has a need in a particular area doesn't mean there's a lot of jobs in that area, and that's one of the problems that we face. And it's a difficult problem. We try to teach our students things like entrepreneurship, we would love to do um, more incubation and, and help our students start small businesses to stimulate the economy. But what you identified is, is certainly a problem that we all recognize. Other questions, how to go on to next steps. We would love to make it more of an international university. We would, uh, I, I think we have something like 7% uh, students from outside Armenia in the first undergraduate class. Uh, many of those are ethnic Armenians coming to Armenia to study, which is great. We would like to increase the number of international students. I would be happy if we could get it up to 20 or 25 percent, and that would still be consistent with our mission to educate Armenian students. Uh, from our perspective, if you, our, our strategy, by the way, is to give need-based financial aid within Armenia and merit-based financial aid for foreign students coming in. We want the best students we can get from the outside studying shoulder to shoulder with the Armenian students in the classrooms. Uh, I think it would be good, uh, uh, you know, especially in a country that's 98.5% ethnically homogeneous, it's good for Armenian students to, to uh, be exposed to students from other cultures and uh, to learn alongside them because in the future, in a trade mercantile economy, they will be working with people from many different countries. Absolutely. So. And the, the faculty is also rather international. Our, our faculty is already very international, actually. Uh, and, and that's the way it should be. If you look at other American universities, the American University of Beirut, of course, sets the gold standard for American universities abroad. American University of Cairo, uh, their faculties and their student bodies are, are a very international mixture. So that's the goal. This is the only self-standing undergraduate American program in the CIS. Did I say that I right? I believe that's correct. Yeah, the only um, uh, standalone, it's not 
a, a direct uh, a project of, of a university. In the, it's not a department, it's not a faculty. Right, it's, the, it's accreditation. Our accreditation is not conferred on us by the University of California or any other American university. So we are standalone accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. So with that qualifier, yeah, we are the first standalone American accredited undergraduate program in the former Soviet Union. Um, this, this is quite West, you know, even for the WASC, this is quite out there. Did that mean extra hurdles that the university had to overcome in order to receive that accreditation? Uh, I think we were WASC's first project outside the United States. That's another first. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they have more now. They have, uh, but I think we were the first uh, in, in that regard. They, they have, on more than one occasion, sent teams of, of people to AUA, uh, as they do to any other university they accredit. Um, so it's, it's a longer trip for them, but the procedure is really much the same. You started life out studying physics, moved on to applied mathematics, uh, worked at the Livermore Labs, uh, at Boston University, at Tufts University, all in applied math, and you are now running an extremely unusual sort of institution in certainly an unusual sort of place. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> A week of sleeplessness later, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, it, it, it feels very good. It, it feels uh, just like a wonderful project. Uh, how often in, in, in one's life does one get to be part of the team that builds the first undergraduate program in the former Soviet Union? It's, and, and the team of people at AUA that, that put this together, the faculty, the staff, um, have been wonderful to work with, one, uh, one of the best teams of people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Well, don't think we won't be following all of this closely and showing as much of it as we can. Good, I hope so. I think there'll be, there'll be more to, to see as the year goes on. And thank you. Thank you very much, Salpi. Uh, we've been speaking with Dr. Bruce Bohosian, who is president of the American University of Armenia, which now is not just a, a graduate institution, but also has embarked on the first undergraduate uh, uh, U.S. accredited uh, program in the former Soviet Union. Thank you for following us on Civil Life.